got startled. The pressure shifts to the Owls' talented defensive secondary, a bend-but-don't-break philosophy to keep Lindsley under control. And in the final moments before kickoff, head coach Bruce Arians talked about maintaining an even keel. Steady. Steady today. All day. Steady. Keep credit all day. No ups and downs. No ups and downs. Don't get too high. We ought to rush jump right on it. Get a score. We can't get way up here and then come back down. Steady. Steady. All day today. Consistently good. Consistently good. Intensity level that can never stop. We can't have them all today. Consistently good all day. In and every play. Beautiful place to become something special. Become something special today. They don't have to wait till the 11 o'clock news to hear about this one. All over the country today, they're going to hear this one on the early news. Temple Isle. They are for real. They are for real. Watch out. They come to town. Lead the high-flying Temple offense against an improved East Carolina defense. Come and see the Owls repeat last year's performance as they make the Pirates walk the plank. Free PSFS mugs to the first 10,000 fans. Saturday, October 11th at Bet Stadium. Game time, 1.30. Tickets available at Ticketron or call 215-787-OWLS. There's a bouncy, upbeat group of Owls who take the field. The toss has been won, and the opening kickoff will sail to the end zone. Todd McNair brings it back to the Owls 23. On first down, a pitch right to Palmer. He gets two yards. Third and three from the 30, and Shelley Poole hammered by All-American defensive tackle Jason Buck. Eddie Liberati moves a 55-yard punt, but a face mask penalty gives the Cougars a first down at the 36-yard line. A quick opener up the middle for Lakay Haimuli gets four yards. Then, as expected, Lindsley will go to the air. He finds Richard Zayas in front of Terry Wright for 15 yards and a first down into Al's territory. On second and 10, linebacker Steve Dominoski takes an inside charge. Untouched, he nails Lindsley for a nine-yard loss. But on third and 19, the organized rollout right stops and drills a deep sideline route to Mark Molini. A 24-yard hookup, first and 10 at Temple's 24. On first down, again the rollout, but this time Andy Papalardo gets a takedown, a four-yard loss. On the ensuing third down draw, Dominoski wraps up Robert Parker shy of first down yardage. In comes Leonard Chitty to attempt a 35-yard field goal. It sails wide. The contest remains scoreless. On first down, Paul Palmer, his longest run from scrimmage. A 13-yard scamper on the draw play. Then Lee Saltz, the play fake, finds Willie Marshall on a slant pattern. Good for 19 yards. First down in Cougar territory. On second and six, a roll reversal. Palmer, in motion, leads fullback Shelley Poole to the corner for 14 yards and a first down at the BYU 29-yard line. Then backup tailback Todd McNair takes the salt screen pass, rumbles for six yards to the 23. But a third down completion, salt in the flat for Craig Sawyer, is shy of first down yardage. In comes Billy Wright to attempt a 46-yard field goal. It, too, sails wide, and 11 minutes into the contest, there is still no score. On the ensuing Cougar possession, Lindsley lines up in the shotgun, waits for Mark Bellini to come open, then finds him in front of Chris D'Amico for six yards. But one play later, Andy Papalardo gets good penetration and tips Lindsley's pass right into the hands of Frank Bongiovingo, who returns it 14 yards to the Cougar 28-yard line. A major scoring opportunity for Temple. Again, Shelley Poole follows Palmer to the corner, this time a six-yard gain. On third and run, Palmer gets first down yardage inside to the BYU 15. But once more, the All-American, Jason Buck, catches Palmer behind the line of scrimmage for a loss of three. The first quarter closes, fourth and seventh from the BYU 12-yard line, with no points on the board.
The long march, and Billy Wright will set his sight from 28 yards away. Wright nails his fifth field goal of the season. The Owls post the day's first points. It's 3-0. Then on second and five, Lindsley complete to Robert Parker. Add a face mask penalty, and the Cougars are near midfield. Second down, Lindsley with time, finds wideout David Miles for a first down into Temple territory. But one play later, a strong outside charge by defensive end Jeff Ward yields another sack of Lindsley. Once more, the Cougars are rip up. The Owls will begin from their own 20-yard line. A second down pitch out to Palmer is poorly placed by Salt. He recovers the fumble, but it's an eight-yard loss. Third and 13, Salts will seek the home run. The seven-step drop back, he hangs it high. Gloucester breaks free at midfield, but it is just overthrown. The Owls relinquish the football. Midway through the second quarter, the Owls are still pitching a shutout. First down BYU at the Temple 48. A perfectly timed blitz by senior Steve Dominoski, his second sack of the day as he throws Lindsley to the ground for a seven-yard loss. But the controlled passing game of the Cougars gets it done in small chunks. Second and 17, Lindsley the underneath pass to fullback Rose Hansen for 13 yards. Third and four, Lindsley sets, and despite excellent coverage from Purvis Herger, Mark Bellini pulls it in for an 11-yard reception, first down at the Temple 31-yard line. Two plays later, Haimuli right up the middle, first down at the Temple 19. On second and nine, again Lindsley straight back. With patience, he waits for tight end Trevor Molini to break free. It's a 13-yard gain, first and goal at the Temple 7. On the next play, the play fake freezes the Temple linebackers and allows David Miles to find open space in the back of the end zone. BYU marches 48 yards in eight plays and finally has points on the scoreboard. With three minutes remaining before halftime, the Cougars lead 7-3. Palmer, the focus of the Cougar defense all day long, accepts the kickoff deep in his own end zone. A cut to the far sideline and Paul almost breaks it. It's a 30-yard return to the 26. First down, Saltz finds wide out Keith Foster on a hook for 11 yards as the Owls attempt to get some late first quarter points. But on a key third down, defensive tackles Jason Buck and Sean Knight meet at the quarterback. A game expected to feature two highly touted offensive schemes reaches halftime with only 10 points posted. Brigham Young 7, Temple 3. Third quarter opens, first down BYU at the own 27. But they face an inspired Temple defensive core. First down, Heimuli nailed behind the line of scrimmage by Andy Papalardo. Second down, Lindsley fades. He's chased by Jeff Ward and covered by Papalardo, a loss of one. Third and 12, Lindsley, facing only a three-man rush, has time, but suddenly the pocket folds. Kurt Rukenberg the sack. Three consecutive plays, all of them lose yardage. Punter Pat Thompson sends Mike Palos back to his 39. Mike ducks through traffic in midfield. And the last man between him and Paybert, kicker Thompson makes a short tail tackle. A 34-yard return to the Cougar 27. First down, Keith Foster in man-to-man coverage, and Salt hangs it up for the corner, but it falls incomplete. On third and 12, underneath to Paul Palmer, who breaks a tackle, gets a key first down at the BYU 14. On second and six, the man they call Boo Boo gets a first down on the inside handoff to the two-yard line. One play later, Lee Saltz completes the drive with a quarterback sneak for a touchdown. Five minutes into the third quarter, the Owls lead 10 to seven. But like all great teams, Brigham Young comes right back. First down, Lindsley to Robert Parker in the flat. He eludes a series of would-be tacklers and turns a short gain into a 26-yarder down to the Temple 32. Then Lindsley uses Parker again over the middle, a cut to the far sideline. It's first and goal from the Temple 9. On third and goal, the quick look into tight end Molini, and it's fourth and goal at the one-yard line. Lavelle Edwards opts to go for it. It's Haimuli over left guard. The officials say he is in the end zone. A quick 62-yard drive puts BYU back on top at 14-10. Now the offensive cork has popped, and here come the Owls. First down, play action by Salt, and Keith Foster is open, a 20-yard gain. Then third and nine at the 44, Saltz finds Willie Marshall on a crossing pattern good for 16 yards, but it is a costly first down. Marshall suffers a badly sprained foot 
and the All-America candidate is likely to miss at least two weeks. One play later, Lee Saltz turns breakaway threat. A roll right yields daylight. He turns the corner for a 22-yard scamper to the Cougar 18-yard line. Two plays later, a key third and seven pitch out to Palmer, who turns the right corner, gets a first down at the one. And on the next play, Paul finishes the 77-yard drive with a one-yard touchdown run. It is the Owls who have responded, now leading 17-14 late in the third quarter. Few moments in a football game can change momentum like a kickoff return. Michael Bryant takes the kickoff five yards deep in the end zone, sees a seam and cruises untouched through the Owls. He is finally met by Larry Bruton in midfield, but the 60-yard return turns the tide. First down, Lindsley scrambles right for nine yards. Add a late hit penalty for an additional 15, and the Cougars are quickly on the doorstep. Two plays later, Lindsley scrambles right, directs Bellini to the end zone, and finds him for a 15-yard scoring goal. It takes the Cougars just over a minute to come right back and score. The third quarter ends, BYU 20, Temple 17. Brigham Young, using that control passing game, is on the move. Lindsley to tight end Trevor Molini, a 16-yard gain into Al's territory. But when Lindsley tries to go to that tight end once more, one of the newest Owls steps up. You know, you know, I was trying to stay as close to the tight end as I could, and uh, I looked back at the quarterback, and I saw him throw the ball. The ball was thrown very hard as all. Well. I just stepped in between, you know, the tight end and the ball. Uh, got the catch and uh, I saw, I think it was number 43, come over and he tried to tackle me. And I jumped up in the air, trying to jump over him. And as I jumped, I felt myself losing the ball. So I just wanted to get down and just let the offense take over from there. A big time play from a part-time player. A junior college transfer with incredible speed, Torin Sconyers is one of a number of young, talented linebackers contributing to the Owls' defense. His start was slow, but his progression has been steady. Well, I think Torin's got a chance to be a real fine player. You know, he's a junior college transfer, he broke his hand early, but now with Johnny Smith out, he could throw in behind him today and gave Lance some good minutes on the bench and, and just did a heck of a job. It was a big interception he gave us right there. You know, I just had to get confidence within myself, you know, just you know that I could play Division I ball. You know, I got in against Penn State, but I didn't, you know, do too good. I got in the last series, and I just wanted to prove I had real less I had to prove to myself that I could play and, you know, be as tough as I was in high school and junior college. The intercept gives the Owls field position near midfield and a much-needed shot of confidence. On third and three, Paul Palmer right up the gut for a critical first down. One play later, tailback Todd McNair breaks a 14-yard gain on the draw, but a flag is down. Instead of first and 10 to the 24, the holding penalty makes it second and 19 back near midfield. And when Lee Saltz is unable to find a receiver on third down, he can gain only three yards on the run, but turnover will not lead to points. Liberati's punt leaves the Cougars deep in their own territory. And again, the Owls' defense rises to the occasion. On a second down rollout, Stonyers forces Lindsley to the outside. It's a loss of five. And on third down, Aarons calls for the blitz. Lance Chisholm, the inside charge, it is fourth and 19. Any kind of punt return will give the Owls fine field position, but a special team's explosion nearly gives the Owls the lead. They, they were kicking from about the 10-yard line or 13-yard line back there. And I was lined up on about the 50, I'd say. We had a middle return call. We were going to run right up the gut. And I caught the ball. I fielded the ball. And I took a step left, and I saw an alley open up there. They threw some great blocks out there for me. All day long, they were throwing great blocks. I ran up and uh, shook one tackler, and then I just saw a wide open running room. And then the only, only person in my way between me and the end zone was the kicker. And like I said, I put my shoulder down and tried to run right through him and uh, I separated my shoulder. They told me I ripped my tendons all around my AC joint, so it's going to be a couple weeks at least, so I'm just hoping for the best. Ironically, Pella's injury is the result of hard work and effort. When training camp opened, he wasn't even listed as the Owls' top return man. 
I did miss spring because I played baseball, and that set me back on both the kickoff return and the punt return. So during the fall camp, the summer camp, I really had to go out there and show them that I can catch the ball and return it and, and try my best and, and use all my full capability and speed. The Owls are primed for the upset, but quickly the joy vanishes. On the ensuing play, Lee Salt is chased. And as he is about to be sacked, he throws the football. Intentional grounding, plus the sack, it is second and 28. After a two-yard Palmer run, Saltz is forced to run once more, hoping to get closer for Billy Wright for the tying field goal. It is fourth and 25 from the 37. Wright will try for a personal best 53-yard field goal. It has enough leg, but it is not straight. The opportunity vanishes midway through the final quarter. The Cougars smell the kill. Lindsley still throwing, hits Bellini for 15 yards down the right side. Then fullback Bruce Henson, another reception. This one for 11 yards, well into Temple territory. And at last, the crushing jolt. Lindsley, with time, finds his brilliant tight end, Trevor Molini, with what becomes a 31-yard touchdown pass. The Owls again play dead even with the national power, only to come away on the short end. Final score, Brigham Young 27, Temple 17. Uh, very disappointing because they worked hard enough to win the game and find a way to win. And uh, you know, we're way past moral victories and all those things that some people like to take solace in. We, we want to win. And uh, it hurts when you lose and you play hard. And that's all you can ask for your players, to play hard and give yourselves a chance to win. And they did. We mixed it up nice. Coaches did a great job. Nick Capone, John Devlin, Ray, uh, John Mitchell. They, they did a great job rushing the passer with three, four, Ritson, and, uh, and kept them off balance. They made one or two big plays on us, and that's going to happen. They're great offense. We lost contained their quarterback, making a great play on them. He hit Malini there for the last touchdown. He scrambles left and hits Tyler all the way back across the field. It's a pretty difficult play to make. He did it, and, and they won the football game because of it. I was very, very pleased with the special teams. And in the fourth quarter, Mike Mike's long punt return sets up the, the winning field goal, the tying field goal, winning touchdown. We just didn't produce it offensively. Billy's got plenty of leg for 52 or 53 yards. There was no question about distance. And uh, you know, he just slid out to the right. He had plenty of distance. He hit it about 60, and it just didn't go in. If it goes in, we're probably going to win the football game. It's a 20-20 tie at that point, and, and it's going to get a couple hands back that have been injured, and uh, we lost some more today. And go out and get ready for another war because Pitt is going to play. They're going to they're come to play also, and uh, anytime we line up against Pittsburgh, it's always a good battle. back and looked at last year's film and, and the first thing we noticed we didn't have Paul Palmer in it and that itself is a is a, a big factor in our offense. You take Paul out of the game doesn't even dress for it and mentally the rest of the kids are not ready to play. This year he'll be lined up and, and right off the bat we got a better situation than we had last year. The cross state rivalry continues. Paul Palmer will be there. So will new pit coach Mike Gottfried who features a wide open passing attack with quarterback John Kenjemi. Kajemi is having a, a real good year to start off with. He's hitting about 58% of his passes. They're throwing a lot more underneath stuff, not throwing the ball deep at all very much, and they're just trying to nickel and dime you. Uh, biggest thing about John is he's, he seems like he's a lot more confident, and he's not having to throw the ball deep. You know, they're, they're letting him throw 5, 10 yards, and he's doing a good job of it. The Panthers' defense is led by one of the most talented players the Owls will meet in Tony Woods. The Lankers, one of the finest defensive fronts in the East. There's no doubt Tony's a great football player. The biggest thing that helps Tony, they have three other defensive linemen that you have to single block. You can't just uh, double team Tony Woods, then you'll get beat inside. So you have to single block Tony Woods because of the, the complement uh, players that they have inside. So uh, we, we got a big challenge for us up front this week. Well, I think it's a real good rivalry. Uh, I think for a lot of reasons, it's an interstate game. A lot of the players on our team has either have either played with some of the players on their teams uh, or played against them in high school, and we recruit a lot of the same type of kids and the same kids, and, and that, that brings a rivalry at its best. I think that since we've been here, we've lost to them twice. We beat them once, uh, and I think we're ready to even up the series, two to two. To limit Pitt's ability to change personnel. And a second and one pass is again to Garzinski, a seven yard gain and a first down. 
The key to this attack is the slot back. And on this key third and six, tailback Paul Palmer lines up in the slot. The quick drop and Salt delivers before the linebackers can reach the passing lanes. 13 yards and a key first down. Then back to the conventional eye formation. Tailback Todd McNair makes an instinctive cut left for 15 yards. It's a first down into Panther territory. Another key, third and eight. This time Palmer is a wing back right. Salt takes a three step drop and it's the shovel pass to Palmer who has good downfield blocking for 11 yards and another first down. Here the drive stalls though. The Owls must go for three with Billy Wright once more. His second 41 yard attempt is also true. The first quarter ends Temple six, the Pitt Panthers nothing. The second quarter opens with the Panthers on the move. Kim Jemmy, the sideline route to split end Michael Stewart for nine yards to the pit 48. Second and one, Keith Tinley goes in motion to spread the Owls defense, and Hayward pops one right up the gut, covering 17 yards before Terry Wright takes the big man low. First down at the Temple 35. But on third down, Kinjemi cannot find a receiver. It is Andy Papalardo who hits him behind the line of scrimmage. The defense has held yet again. First down at the 20. Lee Salt looks for Andy Garzinski again. His third catch of the night, good for 17 yards in the first down. Now it is Paul Palmer running between the tackles. First off the right side for five yards, then over the left side for another five. The Owls are close to midfield. But on third down, another attempted swing pass to Palmer. This one is good for only two yards. Ed Liberati must kick it once more. His boomer leaves the Panthers 80 yards from Haybert, first down at their own 20. Now Pitt head coach Mike Godfrey decides to try to churn out the yardage in short goals. Hayward right up the middle for five yards. Then the same belly play, this one for four and a half, third and short. From the pro set, the give to fullback Tom Brown. He is upended by Purvis Herter, shy of the yard marker. The Owls have held again. The punt and a holding penalty mean the Owls will start from their own 28. Lee Salt, the fake to Palmer, lofts one complete to Keith Gloster, a first down at the 48. Then on third and three, Arians calls the weak side option. The toss to Palmer behind Shelley Poole. Paul has a small seam. He hits it in a hurry. Then down the near sidelines he goes for 31 yards to the Panther 14. The Owls will try to punch it in via the ground, but Todd McNair is stacked up for a two-yard loss. Then third and 12. Again, Palmer is lined up in the slot. This time, Salt lost one for tight end Mike Hinnett. He turns at the 12-yard line and can ramble home untouched. A 16-yard Owls touchdown. On second look, it is clear the defense fears Palmer, who comes inside beneath the coverage, leaving no one near Hinnett, who scores, leaving Lee Salt 10 for 16 for 152 yards in the first half alone. Up 12 to nothing, the Owls will try for two, but both Hinnett and Gloucester are well covered in the corner. It remains 12 nothing. The Panthers have managed just 90 yards offense through the first 45 minutes, but at last, Kinjemi gets underway. A first down hook to Chuck Scales covers 13 yards. Then Gladman accepts the pitch right, but defensive end Mike Johnson throws him for a seven yard loss. It sets up a third and 12. Kinjemi has plenty of time to survey the Al zone, then throws short for fullback Tom Brown, who comes up several links of the chain shy of first down yarding. The Panthers will go for it. Kinjemi sneaks for one yard, first down at the pit 44. One play later, Kinjemi fades, again with plenty of time to throw, goes underneath to that converted defensive back, Keith Tinsley. He avoids Herter and gets 16 yards to the Owls' 40. Now back to the ground, a pitch to Hayward Wright. He leaps over a pair of tacklers at the line of scrimmage, cuts it back inside, and rolls all the way down to the one-yard line, a 24-yard gain. At the time running down, Hayward, who had 83 first-half yards, follows his fullback into the end zone. The Panthers are finally on the scoreboard. A hard-hitting first-half ends, Temple 12, Pittsburgh 7.
third quarter opens with another Billy Wright boomer, pinning the Panthers at their own 16-yard line. On first down, Brown gets three before he's hit by Frank Bonjavingo. Then, second down, Charles Gladman on the move, takes the pitch, cuts it inside. He's hit by safety Eddie Parker to pop the ball free. Larry Bruton is on it. A momentum Turner gives the Owls first and 10 at the pit 13-yard line. Play number one, and Palmer can get just a yard to the 12. But on second down, Palmer lined up as the lone setback, a step right. Then the handoff left, a huge hole forms at the corner, and Palmer can score standing. It gives the Owls another six points. Paul Palmer always credits his offensive line, and on this touchdown, it is clear why. Following the snap, center John Incalinga pulls left and knocks away the linebacker at the point of attack. From there, Paul can follow his pulling tackle, Kevin Jones, who eliminates the corner. The dashing design, excellent execution, Temple touchdown. Billy Wright extra point gives the Owls a 12-point lead once more at 19-7. Back to the ground go the Panthers. Hayward gets nine yards on first down up the middle. Then he goes over the 100-yard mark with another nine-yard run. This went around right in. Suddenly, the skies open. A Kinjemi pass is well overthrown, and it becomes obvious that the airways have been shut down by Mother Nature. Within minutes, the rain shower has turned into a monsoon. Offensive choices are greatly limited. Frank Bonjavingo forcing the run effectively all night upends Hayward for a two-yard gain. Then as the intensity of the rain continues to build, Jeff Ward stops Hayward in the backfield. The Panthers will punt, leaving the Owls backed up at their own four-yard line. Now the rain has become a dominating theme. Palmer tries to run the right side. He loses a yard. Yes, the scoreboard said it right. And on third down, Paul can manage just one more yard. The Liberati punt leaves Pittsburgh first down at the 30-yard line. They will go with the two fullback set. Hayward leads Tom Brown, who shakes Purvis Herter at the line of scrimmage, finds running room down the left sideline, and scores. Midway through the third quarter, it is Temple 19, Pittsburgh 13. Backed up to their own 15. Salt sets up a screen pass for Craig Sawyer. He stopped for a loss of a yard. On third down, a pass for wideout Darrell Pinckney is bobbled. This time, facing an all-out rush, Eddie Liberati hits a line drive, which is brought back to the Temple 44-yard line. Seven minutes remain. First down, it is Hayward outside in, a five-yard gain. Then on third down, Hayward again over right tackle. It's a first down at the Temple, 36. Pitt trying to bang it home, stays on the ground with Brown for two yards. Third and seven, the pitch left for Hayward, but Joe Paceni is there. It's fourth down. The snap, though, never reaches the hands of Kinjemi. Bob Prokoskis is on the loose football. The Owls have it with three minutes remaining. But Temple is unable to run out the clock. Paul Palmer can struggle for only three yards. On third down from the wishbone, Todd McNair stacked up at the line of scrimmage. One last pressure punt for Ed Liberati, a 37-yarder under pressure. Pitt will have to go 81 yards in two and a half minutes. Now it is Kinjemi who shows his medal. First down, Kinjemi underneath to Hayward. It's a 12-yard completion. First down. Then, again, Kinjemi will find Hayward. A step ahead of Steve Dominowski. First down. Now Kinjemi will go over the middle to Billy Osborne. First down at the Owls 41-yard line. Kinjemi from the shotgun will set and seek Osborne again. And despite the tip, it is caught. First down at Temple's 27. On the Owls sideline, shock and alarm. The scoreboard clock has strangely stopped. Three plays have run with no time moving. The scoreboard clock will now be turned off. An eerie feeling in the stadium as only the referee knows just how many seconds remain. First down at the 27. A high snap covered by Kinjemi, but it's a loss of 13 yards. It sets up a fourth down. Kinjemi fades. He looks. He's nearly sacked by Jeff Ward, but he spins free and throws for the end zone incomplete, but a flag is down. Pass interference, Temple. New life for the Panthers. Dismay on the outside line. From the 12, Kinjemi sets again and throws, this time through the hands of quarterback Terry Wright, a near intercept. Second down, Kinjemi fades. 
His pass deflected by Dominoski. Third down, Jeff Ward beats his man cleanly. It's ruled an eight-yard sack, and the clock continues to move. Now Jimmy tries to take one more snap, but it is over at last. A coming of age at Panther Stadium. It is the Owls who make the big plays at the end. They survive and throw it. Final score, Temple 19, the Pitt Panthers 13. Believe in pace on. You know, uh, we had a very frustrating last last week, and uh, this one came to the wire again. It was just a matter of 90 kids or 60 kids grabbing hands and believing each other and holding on, and, uh, and it pays off. Hard work never gets unrewarded, and I, I can't say enough about our kids and fighting and overcoming injuries and everything that we had to do to come in and win this ball game. Paul had 105 yards in these kind of conditions. Game plan-wise, what does this do to an offensive line of team that was going to do a lot of run and shoot this week? Well, it, it really upset us because it took the option out of our game. Mm -hmm. uh, when it was in the middle of the monsoon, we had a long run there, and we pitched the ball back to Paul. We, we couldn't catch it. We fumbled the ball in the option, and that was our whole weak side running attack, and we really hurt him with it early. And we had to go strictly to a power game, and uh, the passing game was shot. I mean, the balls were just too heavy, and uh, we just kept getting wet ones in there somehow. But uh, uh, we took our first step to being really, really good this year. We start getting our players back, Willie and, and John and, and Swanee and all the rest of those guys, and, and then we're going to have a heck of a football team for this thing's all over. Yeah.